Hey guys, Ali here. How are you doing? Uh, welcome back to A Layman's Insight and another episode of Disco Elysium. In the last episode, we've met Ruby. She's quite intense. Um, and she gave us a lot of information, I guess, that kind of, once again, turns the whole investigation on its head and it feels like, in some cases, a right back to square one. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look at this thought here for a second. Stop. Now. It is time. Uh, for what? Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. Ooh, what am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. I have no idea what a pepper your box is. Reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. Ah. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Aw, oh, Kim! What a bro. Very cool. Yeah, it, it, it feels like stuff is going down. But there's a couple of things I want to do before... Uh, um, before we do whatever it was that I was talking about. Uh, these two things here, uh, we have two quests that are kind of in the same place. This one here is about investigating the whole Laputa Madre thing. Um, we can call the station. So I thought about doing that from the car, because that's where we've been calling it from all the rest of the times in the game so far. Why break tradition? And obviously I need to question people, especially uh, Cassia, who does appear to have lied to me. And I'm hurt, so I want to go and tell her how hurt I am. So yeah, let's let's head up to the car just now. But welcome back to another episode. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I, I do feel like we're getting. Of shit to give, oh. Loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Oh damn, a standoff. There's a feverish gleam in his eyes. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Okay. Shut up. You're gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. Well, he knows all the words, and he's definitely uh, in his mercenary gear now. There's no, He's not disguising himself at all anymore. I think this is the same guy that was at the gates, right? Or, oh, wait, no, these could be the two new mercenaries. I remember it being said that there was new ones on the way. This is the mercenary. All right, okay, it is him. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. He's, ho he's holding it. There's something very wrong with him. He's danger. No, say nothing. Say nothing. Let, let's 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 hear this out. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kipt is merciful. Who's we'll this? Spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Holy crap! That's pretty. That, that's a. That's a statement, isn't it? I think we should just kill everyone. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. And thankfully, the police has arrived. Have arrived. Sorry, grammar. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. Well, Titus stepping up there. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? Hmm. He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he Yeah, I don't think these guys have guns at all, do they? Peaceful. What the hell is this? Rude... Uh, Honkloven? Hon uh, Honkloven? I think that's how you say that. No idea, sorry. It sounds like the armor figure is weeping. That's his armor talking? Or is he crazy like I am? Oh, <gasps> cool. Nest in your abdominal cavity. Like a little wild mouse, the masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. 
Oh no, sorry, it's him. It's here. The masked man. My mistake. I didn't even see him. <laughs> Fuck, she was right. That must be the third mercenary. This third one. He is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. Oh damn. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. Oh no, I'm not I'm not gonna do that. That's just asking to die, I think. What do we do? Okay, let's state the obvious first. Ease our way into it. Psst. The big one is a mercenary at the gates. The scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. God damn it, Kim Whisper, huh? A sound strategy. He's the leader. Okay, so I guess we're going to go for the big guy first, assuming we do actually have to fight here. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed. But we have to intervene. We're out of time. This is... The mercenary tribunal. Right. I'm going to walk away for now. I want to get this other information. I think. No. We have to step in. Oh my. So going to end well if we don't. Oh, Kim. I love it when you take charge. <laughs> Stop. This is the popo. I'm gonna regret this. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. Oh, so which one is it? Who's right? He is. I was wrong. Uh-oh. The voice from beneath the helmet interrupts your thoughts. You only make out the last word. Easy now. No one needs to die here today. No, oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up. For everyone to see. Tribals? That seems like a very exclusive term, don't you think? No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. That's right, listen to the lawyer. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fists contract as you stand there between these men, all carrying real weapons. No, no, it's okay. Soften him up and trust the others to attack if it comes to that. Make him talk. Present an argument. Okay, that's a good idea. I'm barely keeping you together here. This is it. If you talk to him, he will rattle you, not the other way around. Really? Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Please. Okay. You brought backup from out of town. Oh, yeah. That's rude. Rude. The killer, Owen Cloven. He doesn't talk much. I can see that. All of you cunts inside out. Well, I'm glad he said part of a sentence. At least we know he talks properly. Uh, what was that, Rude? Rip you open. The killer. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He points th to the figure clad entirely in ceramic plate. What do you think he does? I thought he was a nice porcelain ornament. There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. Hmm. He kills? Smart loincloth. He 
fox natives up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. For some reason, that's worth bragging about. Okay, sure. <laughs> All right. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah. Who did? Wait, I just need a little time to figure this out. Time. You had time to fuck around in that church to run errands for your union chief. I saw you. Ah, oh, crap. It was her that was spying on me. Okay. Time is up, Willing Cloth. Give me a name. Now! Man, I don't think it was Ruby. It wasn't me. At least I don't think it was me. Could it have been me? I'm about the only... Yeah, I'm, I'm about the only one who... Oh, wait, if I am that La, La Murta, what's his face's sidekick, maybe that was my mission, to come here and break down the interference on the strike from the mercenaries. And then leave again, but obviously I got so drunk, I didn't leave, and then I forgot everything. It could have been me, right? I don't think it was Titus. Man, I don't know. It was someone else. Someone who's not here now. How fucking convenient. He gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. His fingers are twitching. That's a draw reflex. He's about to draw. Mm. Could it have been one of them? He shot. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the going, that is the going, uh, thing. The going theory. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if you just have one of your pals here right now? No, don't do that. How about the kid? Tell me, the magic fucking sniper, one more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. 92% logic there. I'm gonna go for it. Think! Think! Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud. In a public place. That's true. He was shot, not hanged. Yeah, he was shot, not hanged. You're lying. It's true. He doesn't move the weapon. A keel model 40 revolver, eight rounds in the barrel. The gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. Hmm. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. Let's see. When they confessed they were lying, the gardener isn't even one of them. The hanging was a cover-up. Listen. Oh! He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head. Crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. God damn, this is intense. I missed. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. You're being very selective with what you're remembering here. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Damn! Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. 
This was a close call. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Uh, let's see. Al Hul is a trick the desert pygmies played on us. Do not succumb to it. Your judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. Nah. I'm he clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Wow. Wearing that like a badge of Enough honor. Already. What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat. Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Okay, the wild pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he laughs. It's a hollow laughter. Wild pines is not going to forgive you for massacring a bunch of innocent people. The man stares at you with bloodshot eyes. A Bull ready to charge. He's not listening, but looking for an opening. Now is not a good time to strike. He's looking right at your hands. Do something else. Get him distracted. She's going to be mad when she hears about this. Uh, he doesn't care, though. He doesn't care. There's no point in saying that. So, okay, let me just say one thing. Fucking waste this fuck! Ah, okay. Rhetoric. Let's do this. All right, here we go. <gasps> this is an illegal tribunal. Krenner would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Ah, I don't know, actually. That's a good point. I think it's him. She's just a comms officer and he's window dressing with a gun. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so he doesn't care about the rules. I don't think he cares about who's in charge. I think this is the one. You were called Downwell once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial funky time. Burn villages. Shit that sounds bad on the radio. Sounds bad anyway, really. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer, either. He looks around. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Where does Clashia? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Glacier, the woman upstairs, where is she? Oh, there's Gata. Ah, oh, fuck. It was her, I think. The manager calls down from the balcony. Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. What do you mean she left? She left. Her room's cleaned out. Right before these assholes showed up. So I guess we know who was after her. We should have arrested her. Hmm. The lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! Okay. I don't want to do it in this order. I kind of want to do it here first. I'm not. No, I don't want to shoot him. I, I, I I'm not going to shoot him. Okay, I'm going to go for the suggestion here. Talk about hanged man. <gasps> Dangerous. Oh, thank Ask God. Him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. I knew you weren't a goddamn. Sc like, who are you, Corty? Yeah. Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to. Burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. He points at the whirling in rags. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Corti, Cortinal, 
Major Raul Koti Kotana. Friends with Lely. Raul and Lely. Okay, let's do this. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer. We're all sentenced to death by lead. Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on. I want him to start the reminiscing, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna re recant, like, kind of re-look re at the history here. I don't want the personal, because everyone says good things about him. That's a personal thing. The blue eyes is a personal thing. I'm gonna go for the war. Something that they shared and he can link to being personal, because it's not personal to me. So, Benatal, or however you say that, 41. That really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. He points to him. In your ship, I'm ready to... <laughs> Indecipherable mumbling. This guy is a bit nuts. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lely knew how to command. Okay. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Keep it going, Kim. Oh, yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen because he seen Bill and Kipty the Kipt here. He points to Titus and Eugene. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. We did everything, kind of. It was all probably in the wrong order and took way longer than it should have done, but we did stuff. Listen, man. We told you we told us what what did you say who said that tattoo fuck you'll die first listen you're lely everyone says good things about him he was a talker fuck do you mean talker ah f i knew that could be taken the wrong way we've heard testimony people say he was charismatic a nice guy to be around yeah he liked to chat up the natives share leaflets Squeeze a bit of kit tass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. He points toward the yard. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for sure. Like you just did. Me. You already did that. I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. You, God damn it. Blaming symptoms, not problems. Come on. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. He had blue eyes, didn't he, your Cardinal? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Your colonel did not deserve to go out like this. I promise. I will find his killer. Find his killer? Cop. His killer stands right there. Shitting his pants. And you're standing in the way protecting him. I wish I had asked about Clashia first. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. No, no, no. But you got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Ah, oh, Dad, do I really want to go for the shot? Ugh. Ah, oh, man, I really don't know. If I do that, then the other two can shoot these guys. If I stand there and hope nothing happens, it might defuse itself. It might defuse itself. Oh, man. Also, I don't think I'm going to be able to shoot through that armor, if I'm honest. Oh man, this is a tough one. 
This might backfire. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try a shot. I, I don't want to kill him. Oh, game. Why you put me in this position? God damn. I'll make a decision. I promise I will. I mean, I've calmed him down a bit. And I've distracted him. I'd rather use the distraction. I'd rather believe in the best of him. Honestly, stand there quietly. Hope nothing bad happens. Let's see what happens. What's the matter, line clock? Got your mouth full of dick. Think I'm gonna spare you? My brother is dead. Shit, this is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. If I say the top one, he will just hold everybody else ransom. God damn it, I did my best. I just need more time to solve the murder. Root. Kill him. No! Don't do it! The porcelain man raises his rifle and takes aim at Chi. His hands are steady, and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. Okay. I'm gonna try and uh, like avoid the shot. The shot rings no! Something violently tugs at your shoulder, pushing you backwards with incredible force. Ah, oh, man. Oh, wait, that's not working. A volcano of burning pain erupts from your left shoulder. I'm holding my right shoulder. <laughs> the pain flows over your entire body like an awful shock. A grim knowing rises from within. Half of your body must be gone. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly without trembling. He aims, face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. An extremely difficult shot. Then, two shots reach <laughs> and you hear a scream. But you're too hurt to see who got hit. Kim? Did he hit the rifleman? Wait, who screamed? Yeah. Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in oh, a no. of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like... Red geezers. It's kind of annoying that I've wasted those two things now, because they're not doing anything for me at all. Uh, Watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and panic, and a pistol raised aiming at your chest, point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Here it comes. Death. Let it happen. God damn. You simply blink. Then something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Try to open my eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them, like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, a silhouette appears, crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. Gun down in the line of duty. Kim, I lied. About not remembering who I am, I made it up, I remember everything. What? 
There's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Yeah, I tried to do the right thing and to get gunned down and die. Sorry. Yes, keep talking. Stay awake. Look at me. The lieutenant pushes down on your wound hard. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant. And a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When suddenly... You sense something behind him. Uh-oh. A shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. Oh, man. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, Kim. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips. Your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone. And so is Kim. And the whole world. Fall into total darkness. This is damn. One more door, baby. One more door. Will I be a ghost now? Brother, you already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them. Scaring each other. Haunting each other. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Leave them behind. Rest. No, let me go back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. The hours hurting, moaning in his sleep, and rotting, and being disinfected, and smelling of drugs, and feeling saliva in his mouth, drifting in painkillers, thrashing in his bound sleep. He can't. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. Oh. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. I'm alive. Sunrise, Arabellon.
Uh, he's he's in the middle of a freshly clean room with a fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. What did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise by Rebellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Hmm. Isn't that written on your... My gun! It's engraved on it. Cops like it. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. He looks out of the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. <sighs> Good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. What happened? What happened? We tried to take the diplomatic route and hoped they wouldn't attack first. They did. The Major gave the command. What happened then? As retaliation, the rifleman shot you. He hit with his carabine. I was looking for a clear line of sight when I found it. He sounds a tiny bit sorry. He did not find it before you got hit. Mm. I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Oh, man. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital oh. yesterday. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name. They are all that's left. Titus is dead? Yes. Nod. You were bleeding out by then. You warned me. I was able to disarm Cortana before he got the jump on me. I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the pole, though. And that's what happened. Titus is dead. Yes. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. Okay, fair enough. Oh, is it that time? Oh, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. And the Major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Cornell claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. I'll bet. There is unveiled anger in his voice. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. How many casualties on the Union side total? Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, Angus, the fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. And that's... All. Oh. An absolute disaster. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. Yeah, I guess that is a good, a good thing. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. His smoking, his hunched back, you have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. Oh, it's cannabis. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just got the dopamine pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. <clears throat> you give me drugs? Oh, damn you, man. The room is clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take dopamine and curse. And drink water. How bad am I hurt? Pretty bad, officer. You've suffered two wounds. The first is below your shoulder. The bullet passed through your shoulder blade, luckily missing your lung and heart. The second shot hit you in the thigh, the left quadriceps. No major arteries were nicked, but the bullet had to be removed. Bacterial infection was treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. You won't be able to dance much. That's for sure. Uh, you should be able to live with limping around, though. 
Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. Really? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Oh, you haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? Yeah, best not to agitate myself. Sorry. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Oh, no way. Thank you. No need. Okay. Moment of truth. Can we walk? Please. I can Easy now. Stand. The lieutenant turns double again before your eyes. An orange hue of pain. Your balance is way off. You feel like you're about to fall over on that thing. How are you? Hmm. I'm very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. The lieutenant doesn't reply. Just looks at you, teetering on your feet. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Well, if I can get on with the rest of the missions, then I totally know what's going to happen next. Do you? Because we can't talk to Evrard. The harbour's in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. Joyce has left too, thanks to our meddling. You don't think it was a good idea? I don't know what to think. It might not have been a bad idea. There is a pin somewhere in the machine. Something is keeping Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out of the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Wait, you've checked? She's really... Guard confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else, outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. It can't have been me, right? I mean... I mean, the reason why that jumped out in my head during the standoff was because, well, you like you hear these stories, right, of people who commit heinous acts when essentially not fully in control of their of themselves, and then they kind of block the memory. You know, I mean that's possible. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. Hmm. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches. Revolutionary era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. Okay. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. Ah, come on. Are you not pissed too? <sighs> this is because I'm Laputa Madri's whatever that is, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Have the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Okay, who is this are, guy? It is not a decisive factor in this case. Who is this guy? That does make some sense. The Maybells, Kim, the flowers. What? They were on the roof. I did not... I did not catch them. Fucking butterfingers. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. <laughs> He's wrong. No, Kim, every piece of garbage in the city is connected to the case. Okay. He concedes, clearly not meaning it. There's still a 28% possibility 
the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Uh, the miracle hasn't happened yet. It's not over yet. He does not know what to reply. And <laughs> nobody Looks would. Out of the window, then back at you. Yeah, I'm crazy. It's morning outside. You think? You know what I think about solving crimes. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins. Oh wait, <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> you know what I think about solving crimes. Oh, that, that's how I should have read that. Solving crime. Actually, I don't want to talk about this crime. No, solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. Say nothing. Are you ready to limp? I am ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? The lieutenant did mention doing more ballistics. Mm -hmm. Also, it's just close enough to endure the walk. We should check Clash's room upstairs. Why not? He extinguishes the cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. That is a fine, fine idea. I uh, I don't know what to say. I thought I thought the game was over when I died, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad it's not because I'm still curious. I mean, I mean, Clashia ran for a reason. We can't assume that she did it because it could be that these people have been chasing her, and as it's like a kind of a. A coincidence that she's there and seen them and then she's run away when really they're there because they're trying to get justice for their fallen comrade not really having any kind of objective to obtain her or kill her man we've been played a lot by the hardy boys most of which are, are dead now all but two of them now i think i hope i hope elizabeth didn't die I can't remember if that was in the list of names. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this episode here for now. Uh, when I come back in the next one, we'll explore this room a little bit, because there's some music to listen to here and a bath to have. I think we should probably have a bath. I think we can have a bath anyway, we'll find out. And then we'll go into Clash's room and just try and get some more clues about the ballistics. And then we'll take it from there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And of course, if you want to come back for um, uh, future videos, whether it be of this or anything else I cover in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, that way you'll be made aware of videos that go live. For now though, take care, and I will see you in the next video.